Next question is from BK Prodigy 309. What do you recommend to get stronger after hitting a plateau on the flat bench press? Yeah, what were some game changers game changers for you guys on incline. flat bench? For in, when I went to incline uh, and just started to focus on that. Now, mind you, the reason why that was so beneficial was because of how much I neglected it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I, for much of my lifting career, I was always into flat bench, flat bench or decline with my buddies because we can lift more weight with decline. Right. Yeah. So, and the reason why we avoided incline was because it was fucking hard. It was hard. And I was much weaker on the uh, incline bench press than I was the flat or decline. And I was like, well, if I, if hitting flat bench hits most of my chest, why do I need to do an incline that often? Plus that's the one you brag about. Right. right. Uh, totally. Right. So I avoided it. Uh, I shouldn't say I avoided it, but I did it uh, rarely in comparison to how much I did flat and decline. And I remember I just made it a goal at one point, like, you know what, I'm going to get my uh, up, uh, incline bench press up to what my flat bench was. And then for probably a good year and a half, um, consistently training uh, incline, incline dumbbells, incline fat, flat bench, and everything came up. Like, mm -hmm. and, and I saw huge development in my chest that I hadn't before. So that was a big game changer or, or plateau breaker for me was actually just focusing on a good chest exercise uh, exercise that I don't do very often and making it a goal to get good at it. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Watch what that does. And so that incline was for me, but this person could be asking this question. Maybe you don't fly very often. Maybe you don't ever do dips uh, uh, for it at all, like something like that. So yeah, so to, to piggyback off that, the dips for me um, were a huge game changer in um, really working on uh, even pausing down at the very bottom and digging my way out. So I was always working on, you know, getting a little bit further and in, in, in deeper so I could uh, gain more range of motion, more strength in that, that you know, position uh, because, you know, when I go to bench, you know, that was always a sticking point for me at the very bottom. You yeah. know, you, you really have, uh, you know, less, less support there, less force production, uh, you know, in that position, but uh, training that to, to, to be able to generate more force there where I needed it, you know, was huge. And then on top of that, just, you know, having proper mechanics and, and stabilizing my shoulder joint, uh, was tremendous because that that was always something I ran into inevitably because when you add more load, uh, it, it's going to expose you know kind of what your body's naturally going to do to to be able to uh, you know use whatever it can by any means necessary to get the weight off of you and so I was not using the same uh, you know go to like solid mechanics like once the weight started to increase and so that was a lack of stability in my shoulder that I exposed which you know rotational pressing and you know more uh, rotational type of mobility uh, practice really contributed to a solid joint for me to work with. Yeah, for for me and those all those made a difference for me. But the biggest differences I noticed was one was frequency is how often I I bench pressed. For most of the, well, for a lot of my early lifting career, I would bench press once a week because I hit chest once a week. I'd go to failure, get my chest sore, you know the whole thing. And I could not get to three plates on the bar. I just could not get to 345s, 315 pounds. That was a huge goal of mine for the longest time. And then I had this, this, this employee that worked for me that just had this incredibly strong bench press in particular. And I noticed that he would bench press all the time. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do anything to failure. It wasn't like he was doing a workout. He would just go out to the workout floor in between clients or whatever and he would throw some weight on and practice benching. And he said this got him super strong. So I tried this out. I stopped benching to failure, and I just started benching three or four days a week. And I literally, not only did I get to three plates, but I surpassed it. It was like this huge jump in my strength just from practicing the lift rather than like always trying to hammer my chest and go to failure. And then the second time I saw a big jump, was when I used uh, progressive resistance. It's the first time I used resistance bands on my bench. Um, literally, just, I, I set up my bench press, and then I attached bands to the end of it, anchored them, and so the resistance was higher at the top of the bench than at the bottom, and I could overload the lift very differently. And that got me to jump uh, big time as well. Those two things were probably mm -hmm. the biggest. But I think the key is, uh, you know, between everything that we're saying, if you're stuck mm -hmm. at a plateau you definitely have to do something different. So whatever you're doing obviously isn't working. 
and just change it. Sometimes that means doing more. Sometimes that means doing something different. And sometimes that means doing less than what you're currently Did, doing. Doug, didn't we do an episode that was titled like how to like eight ways to break through a plateau or something like that? We did do something on that S- some time that, ago. Yeah. I mean, and this is uh, just go down that list. Uh, It'll go, apply to all lifts. Right. Because exactly. We, we went through uh, all these different ways to progressively overload the body. And, you know, when sometimes we, we always get so focused on the, the simple stuff like the weight and the reps, right? Oh, I've done every rep range. I've done all this weight. Uh, I've increased my weight to the most I can. I can't get anywhere. There's other ways by messing uh, with tempo, with uh, technique, like just we can overload the body in a lot of different ways. And we get into that in the episode and just, I would go down that list and look at all the things that you have currently tried and things that you haven't, and then add the ones that you haven't. That's episode 1630. Perfect.